Hello, good evening, everyone. Well, the topic is a review of Kerala Real Estate Regulation and Development 2018. Uh, it's a bird's eye view of this act. So coming to the introduction. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, okay, fine. Hello. So uh, coming to the introduction part, well, uh, Real estate sector is one of the top leading sectors around the globe with four main subsets called housing, retail, hospitality, and commercial. Well, uh, it is the second highest employment generator in India after agriculture. Then uh, coming to the NRA investments, most of the NRA investments are invested in uh, real estate sector. Uh, well, the long-term and short-term are expected in the sector and the most preferred investment destination for NRAs is expected to bank to Bangalore, followed by major metro cities in India like Ahmedabad, Pune, Chenna, Chennai, Goa, Delhi, and Dehradun. So it's the need of the Harvard to study more about this emerging and growing sector. Well, the main problem or the main uh, issue regarding the prospective growth of this sector is affected by absence of professionalism and standardization. Well, from the perspective of com consumer protection, the sector has largely been unregulated. Regarding the available consumer protection laws, recourse available therein are only correct, but not avoidable. So the government of India has introduced this law, Real Estate Regulation and Development Act 2016, with the aim to standardize this sector. So earlier, this act was totally unregulated. So this act brought some transparency in fair, uh, and fair tran practices in transactions related to real, est uh, real, est uh, real estate uh, sector and which will help the pro uh, help to protect the interest of consumers and penalize the errant property developers. So this review intends to give an idea about the act passed by the government of India and the rule passed by the state of Kerala and to unravel the pre and post scenario. So this article has been developed mainly on great literature and other secondary sources because there is a dearth of wild literature on this theme since RERA is the recently one in Indian context and Kerala in particular. So coming to the real estate scenario in India. So uh, black money has a greater role in real estate, real, real estate sector because investment in properties is a common method of adjusting unaccounted cash. Real estate and gold are the main areas where cash generated from tax evading transactions are invested. According to National Institute of Public Finance and Policy Report 2012, black money around 5.7 lakh crore have, had been generated in the transfer of real estate properties. And as per the study by Ministry of Finance, uh, the topic name is a white paper on black money 2010 stated that a large number of real estate transactions are not reported or underreported. And the real estate sector in India account for 12% of the GDP. And there was no way to check the authenticity to the claims of builders which are published in the newspapers as advertisements. The sector was really opaque since there are no legislation on builder disclosure so there was an urgent need to regulate this sector to protect the interest of consumers and to standardize the sector. So coming to the next area, real estate scenario in Kerala. So Kerala is a state in India. So Kerala has now become the leading real estate sport hotspots in India, which was overshadowed shadowed by metropolitan cities like Bengaluru, Chennai, and Hyderabad in the past. The real estate boom is a result of state's good gov governance and sudden growth of business and IT sector, which created direct and indirect employment opportunities. The increase in employment opportunity opportunities resulted in the flow of both skilled and unskilled workers into the state, which in turn resulted in the ever increasing need for both housing and commercial space. And due to state's infrastructural development, introduction of large scale commercial and digital hubs, most of the cities are modernizing at a fast paced manner and urbanization is happening above the average rate. So these all, resulted in the boom of real estate in the state along with the problem of transparency, tax evasion, and consumer disputes. Then according to Predai Kerala, uh, it's an association of builders association. Uh, due to girls job prices and the demolition of residential flats at Marudu Kochi, due to violation of coastal zone regulation rules, the demand of real estate in Kerala dipped by 15% to 20% during 2019-20 period. Earlier, uh, 70 to 70, 70 to 80 percentage apartments were brought by NRIs, but now it has decreased to 50 percentage due to all these issues. So then the law came in 2016. The law, uh, law is the Real Estate Regulation and Development Act 2016. 
The Real Estate Regulation and Development Act 2016 was cleared by Parliament on March 2016 and came into effect on 1st May 2017. The core objective of this transformative legislation is to ensure regulation and promotion of real estate sector in an efficient and transparent manner and to protect the interest of home buyers. Under the Act, states and union territories had to notify the real estate rules and set up real estate regulatory authority, that is RERA. So these are the major benefits of the Act. So uh, this Act had a major benefits to so many uh, stakeholders in the real estate sector. So the major uh, stakeholders are consumers and the developers. So for the first one, the consumers, it ensures timely completion of projects, prevents diversion of funds, and protects the buyer's interest. Then transparent transaction helps to curb black money, promote informed choice of buyers, curbs the unfair trade practices. Then introduction of agreement for sale rules has ended the one-sided agreements and buyer exploitation in the sector. Then fast track dispute resolution mechanism through real estate regulatory authority and appellate tribunals across the country. In case of default or delays, equal rate of interest has to be paid by the promoters and buyers, thus bringing equity in operations. Then the benefit to the uh, next major stakeholder, that is developer, it eliminates untrustworthy operators from the sector, promoting genuine developers, channelize investment into the sector. Then it restores investment sentiment of consumers. Regulatory mechanism will increase the confidence of the financial institutions in the real estate sector. Then properly regular, proper regulatory mechanism of the act will increase FDI in the real estate sector. So the rationale of the study is, uh, sorry, the rationale of the act is to protect the allotees in risk and ensure accountability, establish, establishment of fast track dispute re, uh, resolution mechanism, introduction of professionalism and pan Indian standardization, information symmetry between the promoter and allotee, imposing certain responsibilities on both promoters and allotees, infuse transparency, ensure fair play, and reduce frauds and delays, establish regulatory oversight mechanism to enforce contracts creating investor confidence by promoting good governance in the sector. So these are the major stakeholders of real estate. So uh, the major st stakeholders are promoter, real estate uh, agent and allowed. So promoter is the one who develops land into a project for selling to the others. Then the allowed person to whom a plot, apartment, building has been allotted, sold or otherwise transferred by a promoter. Then comes real estate agent, the person who negotiates or acts as acts on behalf of one person in a transaction of transfer of his plot, apartment or building in a real estate project by way of sale with another person for transfer of plot, apartment or building of any other person to him. Then other stakeholders are architect, engineer and advertisement. So uh, moving on to the next slide. Uh, Kerala Real Estate Regulatory Authority. So as per the act, Kerala, uh, Real Estate Regulation and Development Act 2016, all the state has to uh, follow or form a regulatory authority. So as per the rule, Kerala has developed or constituted a committee named Kerala Real Estate Regulatory Authority. So till now, 130 agents have registered and 563 projects, uh, mainly residential apartments, have been registered with KRUDA. It is mandatory for both the projects and players in the real estate sector to get registered with the authority and to disclose the details of projects to both authority and public. Violation will lead to project re-registration and penalty, which can go up to 5% of the total project cost. RERA registration number should be displayed in the project advertisement also. Then uh, this act came in 2018. Uh, real estate projects needs to be registered with real estate regulatory authority, without which the promoters cannot offer these projects for sale. Registration with RERA is mandatory for those real estate agents who are dealing with these projects. 70% of the buyer's amount has to be deposited in an escrow bank account and used only for the purpose of that particular project and withdrawals have to be verified and certified by chartered accountants, architects or project engineers. So the Real Estate Act 2016 enacted by Government of India is a landmark regulation to bolster, uh, bolster and standardize the real estate sector. RERA Kerala was set up by the government of Kerala under the patronage of Real Estate Regulation and Development Act 2016, which was formally established on January 1, 2020. After three, uh, no, after two years only, they have formed this authority. Act as an overarching mandate aimed to ensure accountability, transparency, and protecting the interest of the consumers in the real estate sector. 
So till now, 132 engines and 568 projects, mainly residential apartments, have been registered. There is an increase in registration from December 2020 to September 2021. The table shows the number of real estate projects and agents registered under care era. In December 21, 2020, uh, 318 projects were registered and 107 agents were registered under care era. Well, it rose to uh, 568 projects and 130 agents in October 7, 2021. So it is mandatory for both the projects and players in the real estate sector to get registered with the authority and to disclose the details of projects to both authority and public. So the table shows that complaints registered and exposed during the period 2019, 20 and 2020, 21. Violation will lead to project deregistration and a penalty which goes up to 5% of total project goes. RERA registration number should be displayed in the project advertisement. Number of complaints received during the current period is current period means 2020 2021 uh, is comparatively lesser than the previous period. A clear picture is yet to come only after the completion of this period. Well, the main features of RERA Act Kerala is that establishment of Kerala Real Estate Regulatory Authority. As per the Act, the state government has to establish a real estate regulatory authority to look after the real estate transactions. The authority shall also con constitute an arbitrary mechanism for sweet. Shift dispute redressal relates to the registered real estate projects, including the time delay, quality of the construction of the projects, etc. So the next one is financial discipline and transparency. The following provisions are ensured by the Act to have transparency and financial discipline in the real estate sector. Uh, the first one is disclosure of project information, adherence to approved plans and project specification as approved by competent authorities, obligations regarding the veracity of the advertisement or prospectus. Rectification of structural defects within two years of possession. In case of default, refund of money to the consumers. Uh, that is compulsory deposit 70 percentage of amounts re realized for the real estate project from the allowities in a separate account in a scheduled bank within a period of 15 days to cover the cost of construction to be used for that purpose. Then quarterly updates of various aspects of the projects, including a list of approvals taken, documentation, the status of projects, etc. Well, coming to the conclusion. The Landmark Legislation Real Estate Regulation and Development Act 2016 RERA, marking the beginning of a new era in the real estate sector and a step towards reforming the real estate sector in India, encouraging uh, four, five, uh, four main aspects, that is greater transparency, citizen centricity, accountability, and financial discipline. The enactment, enactment of the Act has been a real advantage for all the stakeholders in the real estate sector. Earlier, the sector was totally disorganized, but now it has been transformed into a standardized form. This has led to a major transformation in the real estate sector, but still dilution is happening uh, when it is implemented in other states or uh, the current state, uh, the, uh, in Kerala state also. The state of Kerala has passed the rule in 2018, but the authority was formed only after two years in 2020. So a clear picture about the benefits or implications of the rule is yet to known in the coming years. So uh, the researchers suggest the Kerala Land Revenue Department to update the database and make dynamic bright by providing all details, which ensures transparency in the pro property deal and asset valuation. It helps to enhance the revenue of the exchequer by minimizing the black money transaction, which is related to real, mainly related to real estate sector. So the successful implementation of RARA will pay way for home for all. So thank you. That's all about my presentation. These are the references related to the study. Thank you. Thank you very much for the interesting presentation. Uh, we are